Africa. Why are you not convinced to change your mind again on your original pick, <laughs> Argentina? <laughs> Um, <laughs> for all the reasons I've been expressing for the last few days, I, I have concerns about Argentina and too Still many after this game. I, I, too many of their players not willing to play their own natural games in this in, in this team. And again, when Saudi Arabia asked questions of Argentina that they weren't expecting, they weren't able to adjust. You contrast that, and and I know we could level maybe a similar criticism around France today, but they made a ton of changes. I know Frank will get to that later on. And similarly, Brazil, um, who are yet to play their third game, of course. But you just feel that those two teams, France and Brazil, and if everything goes according to plan, Argentina meet Brazil in the semi-final. And maybe we, we see how, how, how that fares. But I just feel Brazil are better equipped for somebody who throws up something that they're not expecting that an adjustment is needed, that game management is needed. I, I just don't think Argentina has shown that. And how is that different than when we started the tournament? Because when we started the tournament, you were picking I, Argentina. I, well, I was picking Argentina, one, because I thought, um, given the run that they were on, they were better equipped or, or certainly playing more, most, of the, most of the players playing with more confidence than you'd seen so far. And just keeping in mind, I, I really feel that Argentina's kind of big hurdle was going far in tournaments, going all the way in tournaments, I, I should say, not far, not just far, but going all the way in tournaments. And then they proved that they could in the Copa America. And I, I just felt I expected so much more from Argentina. Now, keep in mind, they go through top of the group, absolutely, um, and, and, and that's, that's to be applauded. You can make the comparisons with Spain 2010. Absolutely, you, you can do that. But as we look at this group, and, and again, with, with some of those concerns, mm. you lose to Saudi Arabia, and then you beat two teams who are there trying to, on, on damage limitation for 90 minutes. Mexico and Poland had no interest in winning the games. They were just there on damage limitation ex exercises, and those are the two games. So I, I don't think those two tests have disproved my concern um, that Saudi Arabia raised in the first game. What I think it was important from Argentina's perspective today was the fact that, okay, Lionel Messi misses a penalty. Chechnya makes a save. And we have seen this before from Messi in a World Cup against Iceland in 2018, where he missed a penalty and then he went hiding. He went missing the rest of the game. That wasn't the case today. And the fans themselves, he misses a penalty and the fans you could hear Messi Messi they know how important how critically important Messi is for this team and not only for the team in terms of results but for the team so that you have those guys that you just mentioned actually play a more important role so I thought it was critically important as well from Argentina's perspective today that when they scored the goals today, it wasn't because Messi was involved. It's Nahuel Molina who plays the ball back to McAllister. So there's no Messi involvement there. It's Julian Alvarez with a good turn inside the 18-yard box and finishing those chances. The fact that they're not depending on Messi, which we saw in the Saudi Arabia game. When things went south in the Saudi Arabia game, they're looking around like, okay, where, where, where did he go? Where's Messi? Where's Messi? Where's Messi? That wasn't quite the case today. And that, I think, sets up Argentina for success late into this competition. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.